go much into all of the details, I'll tell you about some of the kind of things that our system allows. So it's to, let's say, discovering social categories. You might look at everybody in your social network and then find you know, who are the people that tend to like the same thing, the people who like certain films, what are the kind of movies that they tend to like also, or what are the kind of you know, activities, places that they go. And so you can find social categories that are built into the network that people haven't explicitly gone in there and labeled. What about finding people that are like you, not just by going in and say, I want to find everyone who's a woman who lives in Cambridge, but to say, you know, what about the things that you do or the things that, that you like? You can predict uh, belonging in categories and say, you know, based on what I know about these other social categories, can I, you know, I think that this person would fit into, the, into this other, uh, other category. And if some of these aren't just uh, utilitarian tools, they're also just tools to think with, to think about issues. Like, like how can you think about belonging from a computational perspective? Because most computer scientists you know, don't deal with issues like uh, belonging as a member of a group. Uh, mm -hmm. Seeing identities in terms of uh, one another. So you know, that's again this kind of casting, or you could say even posing. What is, it, is that person trying to be like a member of my group? Right? And so you can see their identity through the lens of a group that you find yourself in. And so I'll show you just a little bit of what, what this looks like. I'll scroll through it. And so, you can do things, say, like seed the system with a few different games, like, say, a game, StarCraft, uh, Civilization, uh, here. And then from there, say, what do other people in this person's social network who like these games also tend to like? And so this is uh, MIT student's social network. And uh, for in his network, for some reason, these gamers also tend to like some series of these classical music uh, composers. And it's something that you, know, you wouldn't have known that ahead of time before using the system. Or, And you can go in and relabel the categories too, or there's a category called a hipsters, and there may be fed in a few independent films or other sort of things, and then you find things in other categories that the person might just uh, tend to like, or you know, things in people's particular local community even. So sports fan, and so the interesting thing too is it's not just trying to categorize all sports fans, it's very local for that person's network. So when we talked about punk rock music before, I mean one person's punk rock music might be pop, punk rock or you know, Green Day or some kind of that. Someone else might be underground. Someone else might be strictly black punk rock. You know, it could be international. So it's very particular for your local community. So what this system can do is find, okay, who likes sports in his own network? And then the, what other things they like? They tend to like you know, the Cold Stone Creamery, but also they tend to like you know, some specific restaurant that's just happens to be in Watsonville, California, right? So it's not just anything. It's something very particular to their own, to their own network. And so now I can go back to those th things I talked about before, identity, torque, double consciousness, and, and passing. So things we know about from the real world and say, we've actually implemented those in a computational way, right? So when I talk about passing, so you could say a mechanism you could use to think about passing on a computer is altering someone's representation to more closely re resemble a member of another category. Mm -hmm. So you have all of these kind of characteristics built in the data structure and then think about it in ways in social networking and honestly explore identities that are different than, than your own, whether for, you know, for good or for ill, right? So it's just a way we can say that these phenomena exist, but in technical terms, that are, but also in dialogue with what we do in, in everyday life. The same with double consciousness, right? Uh, multiple visual representations. So we built, built systems, for example, a game where depending on what you do, if you're walking through the suburbs of your character, then if you act uh, aggressively, or if you pray, or if you punch someone, your character changes in a totally different way. Right? Uh, uh, you might, uh, if you act, you use your cell phone or take out your wallet, you start to become uh, uh, more commerce oriented, like a tycoon, like a monopoly man. You have stock charts bursting out of your head, or you have money bags start to appear. So your character is just constantly changing. It's not just getting new weapons, you're changing in more poetic uh, uh, ways. And so what I want to do now is just segue to another project, which is uh, quite different, but related to, to like identity discussion, because it helps us to tell stories from the point of view of different identities. And this project is called The Living Liberia Fabric. And so we've, we've implemented a number of, of different projects. Uh, this one was initiated by a colleague in International Affairs, but it's uh, quite uh, timely uh, now, especially since uh, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf just uh, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. So, right. so many of you might know that the West African nation of Liberia was never formally colonized. So it was politically established in 1847 by freeborn African Americans, Africans free from captured slave ships, 
all of whom were settled in the area that would become Liberia by the American Colonization Society. So this was a collusion of interest. So it was slave owners, uh, the U.S. government, right? So, it, so I'm not saying that it's a kind of you know, benevolent uh, uh, experience. In fact, the conflict between the local po uh, the local populations with a series of uh, profiteer profiteers who, who aided them uh, initiated civil wars from uh, 1989 until 2003. About uh, 250,000 people were uh, were killed. That's one third of the population that was displaced there. Mm. And so one of the things that Ellen uh, Johnson Sirleaf did was to appoint a Truth and Reconciliation Commission model on the most, more famous one in apartheid, post-apartheid uh, South Africa. And one of the things that the, the TRC said is that memorialization uh, is a necessary part of furthering the, the peace process. And so that's 